Lollipop chicken refers to a chicken wing or a drumstick sort of Frenched and pulled over itself leaving the bone exposed sort of like the handle of a lollipop Lollipopping chicken is a super fun way to present chicken and the technique is simpler than you might imagine How many of these can I do in one video and today? We're gonna make sort of like a Korean version which includes a fiery tangy gochujang based sauce Gochujang being a fermented chili pepper paste uh, it's a spicy Korean ingredient Which is loosely based off of a dish that I grew up eating called kampungi kampungi is a spicy garlicky sweet sour crispy chicken dish brought to Korea by Chinese immigrants. So it's sort of like Koreanized Chinese food. Yeah, I remember like I'd just be like gaming in my room and then my dad would just like bust in the door with these fat sacks of like lollipop kampungi and a couple deli containers of jajamyeon, which is a other Chinese Korean blessing in a totally different video. So yeah, shout out to Great Seas Restaurant in Chicago for inspiring this one and let's get to work. First, we need to prep and lollipop our wings. If you need to secure your cutting board so it doesn't wobble around, lay the board on top of a damp paper towel problem solved. For our wings, we are going to use chicken wings, but for a heartier, larger lolly, feel free to use full-on drumsticks. We need to start by slicing around the bone just above the joint. Do not slice on the joint itself, but rather above it. That's really the secret for a clean chicken wing lolly. If you're using a larger knife for this, I find that choking up on the knife to make it seem a little shorter helps you get more precise cuts. Again, that's around the bone above the joint. Here I push the flesh from the bone to show you the clean dividing lines that separate our mini drumstick from the wing itself. So that's the drumstick lolly, now onto the wing. For the wing, slice directly above the joint like last time, but slice around and in between the bones too. The wing has two bones running through it, and we only need one for our lollies. You can see the two bones right here. Now we need to divide our full wing into two separate lollipops. To do this, simply bend back or compound fracture the bone from the joint, then twist. This should release the bone, leaving a clean stem. Once separated, use your fingers to push the meat down the bone to form the head of the lollipop. Then use your other hand to pull and shape the meat over itself. Now, same thing, compound fracture the wing tip from the remaining full wing and set it aside for like stock or something. This time you'll be left with two bones. Follow the smaller bone to the head of the lollipop, pushing down the meat along the way. Then pick off the smaller bone so you're only left with one larger bone. That'll be our lolly stem. Then just, uh, you know, shape and pull back the meat like last time. And that's the technique. Rinse and repeat for however many wings you'd like. I'll be making eight today. Once your wings are lollied up, lightly season them. All that we need for insanely crispy wings is this stuff, potato starch. I've used other starches, corn included, but nothing gets quite as crispy as potato starch. Add your seasoned lollies to the bag with some of the starch. Seal the bag up and shake it till you make it, or at least until the wings are all fully coated. Knock off some of the excess starch and set the wings on a tray. Now we fry. I like to use a heavy bottom pot for my at-home frying, but if you have one of those nifty little domestic basket fryers, now is the time to flex with that. Any neutral oil will do for frying. Canola is super popular because it's affordable and does well at high temperatures. I have grapeseed oil, so that's what I'm gonna use. If you have a cooling rack, make sure that it's at the ready for your fried wings. If not, a paper towel lined sheet tray will totally just be fine. So we're gonna fry these things at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, but remember that adding a lot of anything, especially if that anything is cold, will lower your oil temperature temperature drastically. And food that's fried at low temperature can often get oil logged and gloopy. To avoid this, I like to bump the temperature up 10 to 20 degrees from what I'd like to be frying at so that when I add in the food, it cools down the oil to where I need it to be. This is important. The trick to super crispy wings is to double fry them. To do so, fry for 8 to 10 minutes, then remove the food from the oil, wait a little bit, then finally add the food back into the fryer to finish. This resting period in between fry sessions allows moisture from the inside of the food to rise back up to the surface and sog out the exterior, but then we fry for the second time and completely dry out the returning moisture. While we wait for our second fry, let's make the wing sauce. For the sauce, we're going to need sesame oil, rice wine vinegar, garlic, ginger, gochujang, toasted sesame seeds, <gasps> honey, water, and a little salt. I love using my cleaver to mince up garlic and ginger. Give the ginger a smash with the wide blade and chop away. Same thing for the garlic. Now add the garlic and ginger to the mixing bowl, then we're just gonna add everything else into that same bowl and give it a mix. 
This is the gochujang I was telling you about earlier. You can pick this stuff really up at any Korean market these days. It's super popular now. Wouldn't be surprised if like other Asian markets have it too. This stuff is salty, so be mindful when seasoning later. Then the sesame oil, toasted seeds, and just a little bit of salt. Just a bit. And now we mix. The mixture will be a little dry and pasty, so add in a bit of water to thin it out. It should be like the consistency of a thin maple syrup, something like that. Remember, you can always add more water, but you can't take it away as easy, so be careful. By now, some time has passed and we're ready for round two of frying. Pop your wings back in the oil. They will not fry as violently as they did when you first dropped them, so don't worry. All right, so now we're gonna fry for another six to 10 minutes or until the wings begin to look super golden. Once the little ones look like this, they're finished. Transfer the freshly fried wings directly into the sauce that we made earlier. The residual oil will help the sauce coat nicely, so don't worry about draining them again. Now we coat the wings. Crap, all right. Okay, real quick. So a cool part about lollipop chicken is that your hands don't get all messed up when you're eating them. You know, you hold on to the clean bone handle and it, uh, you know, keeps your hands clean. As you can see, I coated my wings all the way so the handle is sauced. If you want a clean wing, simply coat each wing individually in the glaze of the sauce. You can do that by putting the glaze in a jar and dipping it. You can do that by just, you know, having a big bowl, rubbing it around the bowl, however you want to do it. Or you can just toss them all together like me and embrace the mess. Okay, back to the video. So, like I said, I chose the embrace the mess route, but the mess really didn't make the wings any less delicious, so I'm straight with it. Now, those are some saucy lollies. And you know I had to hit dem boys with the obligatory thinly sliced scallions. Like most fried things, these wings are best eaten right away. I mean, I, I suppose you could fry them in advance and then sauce them right before serving, but I definitely would not chill them down or wait overnight. And this moment, right here, this moment, is when my mic decided to crap out, right before the crunch shot. Just imagine a nice crunch. So yeah, other than a bit of a mess from the fryer, this dish and technique is super straightforward, simple, and fun to make for a crowd. A big piece of advice is that if you're whipping out the frying setup, why not just like make bulk? Make a lot of these things, you know, make it worth your time. I don't know, sometimes I get a little like fry crazy when I whip the fryer out and just like, because I have the oil out, I wanna fry like everything in my kitchen. Don't fry everything in your kitchen. Or just go to town and fry everything in your kitchen. Do whatever gives you energy. This recipe hit very close to home and I really enjoyed the testing and research process, so happy to share it with you guys. If you liked the video, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this, you know the drill, yada yada. And I will see y'all next week. Later.